everybody welcome we're going to look at a lovely topic today that the prophecy proves the bible to be true so prophecy being about god predicting the future and that being shown in the bible and therefore we can have absolute confidence in what the bible says i'm going to share a presentation with you so let me just um see if we can open this up the prophecy proves the bible true there are many different ways that we can look to prove the Bible to be true, but, but perhaps I think prophecy is the one that's at the top of the list. And the reason I say that is because God himself uses prophecy, he says, you know, actually, this is something that can show that I am God. You know, look at this from Isaiah 42. I am the Lord. That's my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. You know, before they happen, I can tell you about them. Or, or another verse from Isaiah, in, in Isaiah 49, God says, remember the former things of old. I'm God, there's none else. I'm God, there's none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So you can see that God says, look, actually, prophecy is a real proof of my existence. And uh, so we're going to see the proof that his word, the Bible, is true. And there are many different things prophesied about in the Bible, from people to countries, cities, uh, even time periods. And we're going to try to show a few of those now. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just sort of give you a brief example of prophecy, um, just to give you a taste, as it were. So, so the Bible predicted um, that Israel would fall to the Babylonian nation, so ancient Babylon. And secondly, it said how many years they would be in captivity in Babylon. And thirdly, it told you which power would overtake Babylon. So did that come true? Well, yes, it most certainly did come true that, uh, yeah, Babylon would come and take them into captivity. So Jeremiah spoke about that and that did happen. And Jeremiah started prophesying when Babylon were not a superpower. They came a superpower and they did indeed take Israel into captivity. Jeremiah also said that they would be in captivity for some 70 years. And that is exactly what happened. You know, there I'm quoting from Microsoft and Carter Encyclopedia that they Jerusalem fell in 586 and then they got cracking with the rebuilding of the temple in 516. So they, the time they're away was 70 years. And the Bible prophesied too the name of the person who would overcome Babylon. And that was Cyrus. Um, and actually, you can go to the British Museum and see the Cyrus Cylinder which is where he, Cyrus himself writes about how he's uh, yeah, overcome Babylon. And it's not simply that the Bible that's sort of pointing out these things. So there in Isaiah 44, that's a prophecy that's given some well over 100 years before Cyrus was even about. But as I say, you can corroborate that with external evidence as well, external sources. It's amazing, isn't it, to think that before Cyrus was even born, God was saying he would be the one who would allow the Jews to go back to their homeland and to rebuild uh, the temple. And indeed, that's exactly what happened. So that, you know, there's nothing short of that. You know, if that happened, then that's the hand of God. It can't be any other uh, explanation to that, can there? Now, 70 years seems to me a long time, but actually the Bible from time to time speaks of events that would come to pass hundreds of years later. And there are more than 300 prophecies in the Bible concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and his mission on the earth. The Dead Sea Scrolls prove that many of those prophecies written about Jesus were written hundreds of years before Jesus was born. So it's not like we can say, oh, of course, you know, we're living 2000 years later. They were just these things were written after the event. It's just uh, you're, you're saying that they're a prophecy, but, you know, they never would have been. They've just been changed. That's not true. The Dead Sea Scrolls prove that these prophecies were written long before Jesus was born. And what's amazing here is something that I'm, I'm going to share with you that actually a academics in America, a man called Peter Stoner, 
who's a professor emeritus of science at Westmont College, calculated the probability of just eight messianic prophecies being fulfilled by one man. OK, and he just looked at the probability of that. And he worked with 600 students from 12 classes and they examined the following eight prophecies. OK, now messianic just means about the Messiah, about Jesus. So let me show you these eight prophecies and then we'll look at the probability of just one man fulfilling these prophecies. So the first one, that Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. And each time on these slides, you can just see that where the prophecy was, in this case in Micah 5, that he would be born in Bethlehem. And then the second passage is where it's fulfilled. So you see in Matthew chapter 2, the fact that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The next one, that Messiah would be preceded by a messenger, talked about in Malachi, fulfilled in Matthew 3. The next one, that Messiah would enter Jerusalem on a donkey, prophesied in Zechariah, fulfilled in Matthew 21. The next one, Messiah would be betrayed by a friend, prophesied in the Psalms and fulfilled in Matthew 26. That Messiah would be sold for 30 pieces of silver, prophesied in Zechariah 11 and fulfilled in Matthew 26. The money for which Messiah is sold would be thrown to the potter in God's house. Prophesied in Zechariah, fulfilled in Matthew 27. That Messiah would be silent before his accusers. Prophesied in Isaiah 53, fulfilled in Matthew 27. And then finally, that Messiah would be executed by crucifixion as a thief. His crucifixion was prophesied in, Matthew, in Psalm 22, the fact that his hands and his feet would be pierced. And in Isaiah, it speaks of him being crucified with um, criminals, essentially. And that's exactly what happened. And that was fulfilled in Matthew 27. So you can see that just kind of going through eight prophecies, these students with their professor look then at the probability of one man fulfilling eight prophecies. And they discussed it at length and they looked at the various circumstances which might indicate that pe perhaps people had conspired to fulfill a particular prophecy. And so the estimates were therefore conservative to allow unanimous agreement among even the most skeptical of students. Well, the calculations were then reviewed by a committee uh, of the American Scientific Affiliation members and by the executive council of that same group. And affiliation member Harold Hartzler concluded this, that the mathematical analysis is based upon principles of probability, which are thoroughly sound. And Professor Stoner has applied these principles in a proper and convincing way. Well, the resulting calculations, that the probability of one man fulfilling these eight property, prophecies by coincidence was one in 10, to the power of 17. Now that might just baffle you, and it certainly baffles me, but if you covered every continent on the planet with silver coins, and only one of them was marked on the back with a star, the odds that someone could wander every bit of land on the earth and randomly pick that coin would be the same. That's the probability. And you know, that's eight prophecies. There are many, many more prophecies that you can find relating to the Lord Jesus Christ in the Bible. It's categoric proof that it has to be the word of God. Now, I'd like us to come back to Israel now. So we've looked at the Lord Jesus. We're going to look now at Israel as a nation. And Israel is important. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said salvation is of the Jews. It's not because of their good works, but because of the faith of Abraham. That's why we're looking at Israel. They're God's people. And the next prophecy that we're going to look at isn't just about them being scattered from their land for 70 years in captivity, but actually one that stretches a long time. Not just about going to one nation, to Babylon, but about them being scattered throughout the earth. And there are, are actually a number of different prophecies in the Bible that speak about the fact that Israel would be scattered among all people from one end of the earth 
even to the other there it says in Deuteronomy 28 or in Ezekiel 22 I will scatter you among the heathen among the nations disperse thee in the countries and that most certainly happened and we'll come on to a bit more about the fact that that did happen in AD 70 but it's amazing that a country the size of Wales you know th those people have somehow kept their identity despite the fact they were scattered throughout the earth incredible but actually God also said that they would be regathered again to their homeland and there are passages about that so Jeremiah 31 for example talks about them being scattered but says they will be gathered again uh, Ezekiel 34 talks about the fact they'd be scattered but but look at this but I will bring them out from the people gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land back into the land of Israel the land of Palestine well most certainly that has happened uh, that's amazing isn't it to think that Israel was scattered if you know your history you'll know that in AD 70 the Romans came into Jerusalem they destroyed the temple the Jews were scattered they weren't able to live in Israel for many many years it wasn't until 1948 that the state of Israel was established once again almost 2,000 years from them being scattered to then be regathered to the land John Thomas in 1848 wrote this the pre-adventure colonization of Palestine so in other words the Jews coming back to the land before the return of Jesus Christ to the earth of pre-adventure colonization of Palestine will be purely on political principles the Jewish colonists will return in unbelief of the messiahship of Jesus and of the truth that is in him they will emigrate thither as agriculturists and traders in the hope of establishing their commonwealth that was published in 1849, I think I said 1848, it was published in 1849, almost 100 years before Israel got back into their land in 1948. Amazing. How did John Thomas know that? Was it because he was some special prophet? No, because he read his Bible and he knew that God never intended for the Jews to be scattered permanently. He knew that a time would come when they would be regathered to the land of Palestine and occupy that land once more. Many of the ancient nations have disappeared from world affairs, but the Bible said the Jews would survive and the Jewish people today still survive in spite of many efforts to destroy them. And so you can see that past prophecy has come true. And so therefore, we can trust the Bible. Notice another prophecy that Jesus gave about Jerusalem. He spoke about the capital city of Israel. He said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, Jesus said, that all things written may be fulfilled. Prophecy would be fulfilled. Woe unto them that with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. They shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, this is incredible. We know that Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. We know the Jews were scattered, as Jesus has said. But we also know that the time of the Gentiles being in Jerusalem did come to an end. Just let me just first of all point out to you that Josephus, a Jewish historian, shows how that it was a terrible time in Jerusalem AD 70 just as Jesus had predicted it would be but notice also that Jesus said that one day Jerusalem would be back in the hand of the Jews that he said look they'll be trodden down of the Gentiles that city until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled and notice too so Jesus got that right 
the Jews in 1967, they regain control of Jerusalem. They're back in that land. They're back with Jerusalem as their capital. But I want you to see too, look so carefully at this wording now that Jesus said, and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So what he's saying is that the Jews being back in control of Jerusalem is a sure sign that his return to the, to the world is close. And so we believe that as Bible prophecies prove the Bible to be true, the fact that Jesus has promised that he will return to this earth is something we can have absolute confidence in. A final prophecy I'd like to share with you now is from Zechariah. And again, it's about Jerusalem. And it's about the time at the end when God says through Zechariah, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. And a burdensome stone simply means a problem that we can't deal with. Isn't that exactly what we see in Jerusalem? A problem that the United Nations, you know, all the peoples of the earth cannot deal with the problem there. What we need is the return of Jesus Christ, when he'll deal not just with that problem, but with all the problems of the world. And so prophecy indeed proves the Bible true. But that leaves a question, doesn't it? If it does prove the Bible true, and we think it does, what does that mean for me? What does it mean for you? Well, God asks men and women to react to his word, to the Bible. And to come into a covenant relationship with him. And this involves belief in his word and baptism, which then is followed by a life that's looking to follow his ways. And of course, we're watching out for his return. And so thank you for listening. I hope that this has uh, got you wanting to look at your Bible a bit more and look into the wonderful hope that it gives us.